Hello everyone, thank you for joining me on this week's episode of Renting Austin. Before we get started on this week's episode, please remember to like, comment, subscribe, and share if you care. And let's talk about what's happening here in Austin. Unless you've been under a rock and you probably know by now that things here in Austin have not been the best. Now keep in mind that I moved here to Austin in about 2017, so I've been here for about four years. Um, in my four years here in Austin, I have not seen or had an experience remotely similar to the one that I'm having currently. So let me give you guys a little bit of a backstory. So Friday evening, um, I was home, I was working, um, and just going about my day, and all of a sudden, without any indication, the power went completely blank. Now, this isn't the first time the power's gone off, so... I wasn't alarmed immediately when it happened because typically it's gone off for maybe an hour, maybe two hours, and then eventually sometime during the day it comes back on. Now as the day went on and one hour passed, two hours passed, three hours passed, I said to myself, wow, this, this is taking no longer excuse me, than it normally does. But I resigned myself to going to bed that night and waking up tomorrow with the power on. Lord have mercy, I was completely wrong. So I woke up the following day, and the power was still off. Now, I knew that we had ice storms. I knew that, you know, there was snow and all of this inclement weather happening. So I, I was expecting for there to be some issues related to power, just based on this being Texas, and Texas not really having the infrastructure and being prepared for inclement weather. So I knew that this would happen like I mentioned before, my power had gone off previously, so it wasn't unexpected to see power outages or internet outages happening during the inclement weather. So when I woke up the next day, the power was still off. And so I thought to myself, okay, well, this will probably last, you know, to midday and the power will come on. So I waited until midday, tried to get out and run errands and do things. Everything was closed. So there was really nothing that you could do. There were no restaurants open. All of the stores were closed. Um, not a whole lot that you can do. You know, it was really sort of like you were scavenging um, on that first day. So after I went out, couldn't find anything, came back home, and I came back home with my fingers crossed that the power was gonna be gonna be on midday, on day two. No power. So I thought to myself, okay, wow, this is more serious than I had originally thought so okay we'll give it until tomorrow so I bundle up put my comforter on get under my um, my blankets and you know just sort of hunker down um, so that was day two so I wake up day three still no power so this all ha began happening for me on Monday so day three is Wednesday so on day three Again, same experience, no power. Um, decided to go out because at this point, I'm like, I need to kick into survival mode. We need to go get water. We need to go get the essentials because this might be a lot more serious than I had originally anticipated. So everywhere I went, I went to Randall's. I went to HEB. I went to, I can't tell you how many different Walmarts, how many different Targets. Uh, if the store wasn't closed, they had absolutely no inventory. Unless you wanted to survive off of candy um, and maybe some sort of <laughs> um, off-brand chip, there was absolutely nothing in store in stock in terms of essentials. So I went around several stores. Finally, I want to say I wound up finding an HEV. And this is on day three. I found an HEB that was open, got there, got in line, and literally five minutes after I got in line at the HEB, they closed the line. And I was like, thank goodness that I made it on time. Got inside of the HEB, and while they didn't have water, they did have juice and some other um, drinks that you could use in lieu of water, but they didn't have water, which you really need in a, in a situation like this. So I was able to get that, came back home, um, 
I'm still no power. I'm sitting here thinking to myself, this has to be over soon. Like, you know, and keep in mind that because we have no power and no electricity, we don't realize here in Texas how big of a story this has become. We don't realize that the rest of the world realizes what we're going through. So, you know, in your, your own in your own little bubble to an extent, trying to figure out what your next move should be. So I'm sitting here and on day three, I go to the bathroom to brush my teeth and what used to be running water has now become a drip. So I'm like, this cannot be happening. <laughs> this can't be happening. You mean to tell me now I have no power and no water? Okay, something's got to give. So at this point, I decide that I'm going to look for a hotel because I, I need out. <laughs> I have suffered as much as I can stand to suffer. I need to find a hotel. Um, so I start looking for hotels. I get online. And due to the inclement weather, I'm not the only one who's out of hotels. So the hotels are booked. And the ones that do have available rooms are price gouging. So they're charging prices of $500 to $1,000 for a room. So... Now, I don't necessarily um, believe myself to be a wealthy woman, but, you know, I do okay. I, I have money saved. I'm financially prepared. I'm financially astute. I always want to put myself in a position to win, so I do have money that should I need to pay for a room for $1,000 a night, I, I am able to do that. But for me, it just doesn't sound like a sound decision to make. So... I've been going up and down the stairs, sitting in my car, turning on the heat. That's essentially what you had to do in order to get heat if you wanted it and also if you wanted to charge your devices. So I would use my car as a warming station and a charging station. So I went down to my car, sat there, charged my devices, and I just thought, okay, what, what, what's the next move here? What am I going to do? And I just start looking all over, you know, okay, I'm like, I'm going to go outside of Austin. I'm going to look in San Antonio. I'm going to look in San Marcos. I'm going to look at hotels in the surrounding areas. And fortunately, I found a hotel in San Marcos, Texas. It was a, a Hilton hotel, and they were charging about $75 a night. And I found this through Hotels.com, by the way. So I decided to go ahead book the hotel came upstairs packed all of the stuff that i could see the only like keep in mind i'm using a ring light to illuminate my way around my apartment because there's no power you can't really see a whole lot i've opened the windows to allow some natural light in but you know in my closets and other areas like that you just simply can't see um, because the light doesn't uh, illuminate that that far in so I got my ring light. I'm going around packing up things. I grab as much as I possibly could. Um, my hair is a mess. <laughs> my hygiene's a mess because I've been brushing my teeth with bottled water. I've been taking a bath with bottled water. Um, you can't flush the toilets any, anymore. So I'm not going to even give you guys some boring details about that just because I wouldn't want to hear them. So I'm going to spare you guys <laughs> those gory details. So I um, get in my car, I have my booking, I drive down to San Marcos, you know, the hotel that I checked into, they weren't able to check me in because their systems were down due to the inclement weather. So the booking that I had secured through Hotels.com, they weren't able to honor that booking. However, when I did show him the um, booking receipts he did honor the rate from hotels.com so i did get the room at the rate on hotels.com but i essentially had to double pay because i had already paid through hotels.com but had not yet been reimbursed so i get the room and it's really like walking into an oasis at that point there's heat there's a television there's cable there's a hot shower there's a running water and you just take a deep sigh of relief because you you realize in that moment like how grateful you are for the most basic things. So as I'm sitting in the room, I'm checking my emails periodically, hoping that at some point 
I'll get an update from my apartment complex informing me that things had gone back to normal. Um, day one, I didn't get anything. I woke up on day two, and I'll keep in mind, I only booked the hotel room for a single day. Um, so I woke, woke up on day two, preparing for checkout. I pack up my things in my, my car, go check out, um, and I do read my emails, and there is an email from my apartment complex essentially stating that the power was back on. So I'm like, yes. We are making a return to normalcy. So I'm driving home. I'm, I'm optimistic because, I don't know, you know, it's just like the Wizard of Oz said, there's no place like home. So even though I, I was appreciative of being in the hotel, I want to be back at my home space. So as I'm driving home, you know, and just sort of taking in my surroundings, and this, this experience for me has really been, a humbling experience has been a very cathartic experience it's been one of those experiences that will shift your priorities in life you know if you're like me for me it just changed the way I view so many things and I don't know if that's a long-term change or a short-term change but I just know that in this moment the things that I value the things that um, I put an emphasis on has definitely changed um, so I get back home, power's on, the heat is on, but still no running water. So here we are. Today is Saturday, February 20th. I am still without power. I'm well, still without water, running water. Um, I live next door to a Sam's Club, so I'm going to run over there and hopefully grab some bottled water from Sam's Club today. The lines for gas, I'm telling you guys, you would think that it was the end of the world if you tried to buy gas. Gas is sold out everywhere. Water is sold out everywhere. Food, for the most part, is sold out everywhere. Restaurants are closed. Um, I went to Popeye's. The Popeye's I was able to find only so french fries and chicken tenders. But let me tell you, I got me an order and I was the happiest woman in the world because it was food. It was edible. There was something that I could actually eat um, so it's just been a crazy crazy time um, I'm hoping that maybe today maybe tomorrow we'll have running water um, in the interim we're, we're melting snow um, the snow that was once a curse has now turned into a blessing because it's definitely providing a much needed resource here in the absence of running water um, so that's where we are. Um, I'll definitely try to come back and make another video and keep you guys updated on exactly um, what's happening and what's going on. But in the interim, pray, send your best wishes if you're not a religious person. Um, you know, I, I consider myself to be one of the fortunate ones. You know, um, there are a lot of people who have it, who are much worse off than I am. And so as dire as the situation is I'm definitely counting my blessings in the sense that I've, I've seen news stories now and my power has been restored of people who have bursting pipes and um, people who have pretty much lost everything as a re result of this storm and <clears throat> keep in mind I moved to Texas from Minnesota and I definitely, one of the reasons I moved from Minnesota to Texas was because I was just sick of the snowstorms in Minnesota. So, having gone through this experience, the one thing that I can appreciate about living in Minnesota is that Minnesota is prepared. The roads are not plowed here in, in Texas. I don't think they even know what salt, sand, or kitty litter are as it relates to a snowstorm. So they're not even salting, they're not plowing the roads, you know, like, it's just like, I, you know, I, I have a hard time understanding how a state the size of Texas is not prepared for a uh, an event of this magnitude. I just, I, I really don't understand that, you know. Um, and again, having gone through this experience here in Texas and being from Minnesota, you have a renewed appreciation <laughs> you know not that i'm ready to move back to minnesota because i don't want to go through that this this weather here in texas is an anomaly 
this type of weather in Minnesota is the norm. This is what you go through for probably four months out of the year. So again, in that sense, I also feel fortunate because, you know, um, I've been through weather like this before. So I'm, I, I'm very adaptive in that respect. Um, I'm trying to think of this. Anything else I want to tell you guys? There, there will be additional videos, by the way. Um, so be prepared for those coming up. I'm actually going to take a tour. <clears throat> excuse me today. So I'll um, hopefully have a video uploaded for you guys where you can, um, where we, excuse me, can get back to normal here on this channel. Um, in the interim, again, send your prayers, your best wishes, um, whatever help you can offer to people. You know, if you're in a position to do so, definitely. Make sure you're um, you're extending a helping hand, um, and it's not just about money. You know, helping doesn't always you know mean that you have to go into your wallet. Whatever you can do to help people out, um, there's a lot of people here who are in need, and I'm sure they would appreciate you know anything that you can offer. Again, if that one thing happens to only be a prayer or a good luck or a, a simple acknowledgement of the fact that we're with you. Um, I'm sure most people would be greatly appreciative of that. So, hopefully, you're safe wherever you are. Um, be safe. Um, and I'll talk to you guys again in my next video. Again, remember to like, comment, subscribe, and share. Um, and that's it. I'll see you guys again soon. Take care. Goodbye.